The Shape of Water wasn't the first movie about horny fishmen. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Humanoids from the deep. There's your evidence! You're not. Let's start this review with a bang. Thank you. That's in the opening scene of this movie, so you know it's a good exploitation film. Humanoids from the Deep is another fun-filled camp fest from New World Pictures, the production company of B-movie king Roger Corman. People never really think about how important Roger Corman was to film. It was his production company that introduced us to some of the most iconic names in film. Jack Nicholson, Martin Scorsese, and the director of The Godfather, Francis Ford Coppola. It's amazing how many people got their start in horror and exploitation cinema. Humanoids from the Deep, also known as Monster, is one of those movies that deals with the idea of fish people. Jesus, did we got again! I like Gilmen-related movies. Creature from the Black Lagoon, War Gods of the Deep, Island of the Fishmen. I like the idea of fish people. I wish I was a fish person, that way I wouldn't have my fear of drowning. In the small fishing village of Noyo, a chemical has been introduced into the water to try and increase the dwindling salmon population. Of course, whenever science is introduced to the environment in a grindhouse movie, it's not going to be long before something mutates and goes on a killing spree. Which is exactly what happens. The next thing we know, a bunch of mutant fishmen come out of the ocean and start killing people as well as hunting women. Oh, I forgot to mention, these fish people have the urge to mate with human women. Here's something interesting, this movie about a bunch of fish people coming out of the ocean and forcing themselves onto women was actually directed by a woman, Barbara Peters. This is one of those movies that's more entertaining than it is good. I can't bring myself to say it's actually a good movie, but it is a fun exploitation film. The idea is just so ludicrous that you can't take the movie seriously, but you aren't really supposed to. You can tell this was made to be a fun romp. Just look at the designs of the creatures. They look like they would be more at home in a 50s sci-fi movie than an 80s exploitation movie. <laughs> That adds to the enjoyment. I wouldn't call these costumes cheap, more like delightfully cheesy. The creature effects were done by Rob Botton. He went on to do the effects work for Robocop and The Thing. And I will add that the music for this film was done by James Orner. He went on to do the Academy Award winning scores of Braveheart and Titanic. Before he did the music for Titanic, he did the music for the Sleazy Fishman movie. Now you won't be able to think of Titanic without thinking of this. No! Don't shoot you! I love making connections between exploitation films and classic movies. There are plenty of fun moments in this movie that, like the creature suits, are delightfully cheesy. I hope you're not lactose intolerant. Sorry. Like, for example, the ventriloquist seduction scene. Hey honey, wanna see my woodpecker? Will I get splinters? How can you look at a moment like that and think that this movie is taking itself seriously? The movie does a good job at being an exploitation film. You get the violence, the nudity, you get an explosion here and there. It captures the spirit of exploitation cinema. <laughs> I like the setting, a stereotypical fishing village. The characters look like fishermen, and more importantly, sound like fishermen. Well, if find out, use your ass for salmon, baby. Oh, oh, <laughs> Hell, a fish is migrate to hey, land. Hey, will you knock that shit off? My lady tell me she kicked my ass. I've worked around fishermen for years. That's how they talk. If you don't curse, you're not a real fisherman. If you're looking for a more serious movie about fish people, then watch something like Creature from the Black Lagoon. But if you're looking for something more tongue-in-cheek, campy, sleazy fun, going more for entertainment, 
kind of movie, then this one's worth a watch. And honestly, I would give more movies released by Roger Corman a chance. He did introduce us to a lot of people that became big names in film. Now let me ask you, what's your favorite sea monster movie? No existing ocean-dwelling animals, so as much as it hurts me, Jaws is not allowed. Only fictional creatures. If you can't think of one, then just give me your favorite story about a sea monster. Or your favorite mythical sea monster. This is your buddy Justin, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. We started this video with a bang. Can we end it with a bang? Thank you, Pam.